This is BBC Radio 4. It's five o'clock. Time for PM with Eddie Mayer. It's a quarter to six now. A four-year-old girl has been told by police that her bike will be confiscated if she keeps cycling on the pavement. Sophie Lindley, whose bike uses stabilisers, was cycling in Grantham in Lincolnshire with her dad, Dale, when an officer stopped them. He just pulled over and got out and said, look, she's going to have to get off her bike. She's not allowed to ride it on the pavement. Uh, it's against the law. He just said, I'll, uh, I'm going to park here now and watch to see if you uh, put her on the bike further up the road. And if uh, I look in my rearview mirror and I catch her on a bike, he says, I'll turn the car around and I will confiscate the bike. Live on PM, Joe Irvin, Chief Executive of Living Streets, which campaigns on behalf of pedestrians, and Donica McCarthy, who co-founded the group Stop Killing Cyclists, which has organised die-ins for the right to ride bikes on the pavement. Uh, Joe Irvin, first, what do you make of this case of four-year-old Sophie? Well, I must say this individual case looks a bit heavy-handed to me, but there is a real issue about this. Um, It is, I understand, actually a lot of cyclists might feel pushed into this position by unsafe roads, so the real answer is to make the roads feel safe for cyclists. But nevertheless, it is illegal for somebody over 10, I don't think it is for a four-year-old, for somebody over 10 to cycle on the footway by the side of the road. And um, we've got a lot of evidence. We do get complaints from people who feel threatened by this. We ran a poll of, of older people over 65, and I was very surprised that half of them said that they'd almost been knocked down by somebody cycling on the pavement. Now, I must say, most of the time I work hand-in-hand hand with cycling organisations, and 90% of the time we're after the same things. But this is an area where a bit of consideration probably ought to be a bit better. What would you have done if you were the police officer in this case? I'm not a police officer, but I, think, oh, I understand that. I what think would you have done? Year, you you care about bike safety on the roads? I do. I do care about bike, bike safety, and I don't think a four-year-old being on the road with stabilisers would be very safe. I might have advised the uh, the father to find a little place in a park or somewhere or one of those areas where they're not interrupting with other people, and they could learn to cycle there. But I'm not. I'm not the policeman. I wasn't there. Okay, and we will come on to the wider issues you've raised in just a second. But Donica McCarthy, this. Uh, this girl, this four-year-old that's got us talking about this, um, what do you think of what happened to her and what would you have done? I think it's a shame. Um, what the policeman should have done was praise the, the, the parent for teaching the child to cycle in a non-dangerous way in a safe environment. What do you think and of some the, of the points that Joe Irvin raised about how some pedestrians, and he cited this poll of people over 65, some pedestrians uh, feel pretty unsafe when cyclists use the pavement? I think um, nobody wants anybody cycling irresponsibly on pavements, but we have to put it in perspective. Um, almost only one pedestrian was killed over... Oh, one death is one too many, but over four years, only one pedestrian was killed on a, on a, on a pavement by a cyclist. We're actually talking about 3,000 cyclists killed every year on the roads. We went to the Minister about this and asked him to issue sensible guidance, and the guidance says for adults, if you're afraid of being killed by a HGV truck or a bus on the road and you're cycling irresponsibly on an empty pavement, then the police should use discretion and not come down like a ton of bricks like this policeman did. What do you say to that, Joe Irvin? Well, I think it's the cases. I think it was an empty pavement. Maybe I probably uh, agree that there should be dis- there should be discretion. And it's certainly the root of the problem is unsafe roads and things like bringing down uh, maximum speeds to 20 mile an hour in urban areas would be a big move in the right direction but nevertheless cyclists aren't above the law and there are a number of occasions where people do cycle through other people walking imagine if you're an older person imagine if actually we're dealing with some people who are deaf or have impaired eyesight they can't see this cyclist come along they might not even hear a bell they don't expect to have a cyclist on the pavement and this is you know, it's inconsiderate. So maybe in those occasions, the cyclist should either get back on the road or just dismount and wheel the bike along. What about That's the death not... statistics that Donna McCarthy cited? Oh, it's no doubt at all that uh, that um, HGVs and cars are the biggest death in terms of fatalities and that's for people on the pavement no doubt at all but the fact is just because you don't kill somebody doesn't mean you're being considerate or right do you agree don mccarthy that it is illegal for people over 10 to be cycling on the pavement and, and if that is the law then aren't the police entitled to enforce it 
Well, the, 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 the police should enforce the law when, when it makes sense to do so. For example, oh, in, in, in... Really? Because should the yeah. police decide what, which laws make sense? That's interesting. Well, well, if you're actually forcing a cyclist on, from a pavement onto a road with, a, with that's trundling with HGV trucks and the, em- and the pavement's empty, that's not sensible use of the law. But let's get back to basics. It's not a conflict between cyclists and pedestrians we really have on this, in this country. It's a conflict between cyclists and pedestrians and the, the, the HGV road users. And the real problem in the United Kingdom is our politicians are refusing to invest in, 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 in cycling safety. In, Br- in Britain, we spend £2 per person per year. In Holland, they spend 28 If we spent that on creating a network of, of like, pr- physically protected, safe cycle routes across Britain, we wouldn't be having this conflict between cyclists and, and pedestrians. We'd be on the same side, which is where we should be. How big a threat to pedestrians is the bicycle, do you think, Donovan McCarthy? Well, as I said, almost almost um, in four years, a quarter of a death happens. That's statistically non-existent. What about injuries? Um, it, the injuries are uh, the vast majority of injuries on, on the, for pedestrians is over ninety eight percent are sourced from vehicular traffic. So less than it's around one point six percent of injuries are resulting from cyclists, and almost none, none are lethal. Joe Evan, you seem to be in agreement with Donna McCarthy, and I, I suppose uh, many people would agree with you that there should be uh, greater investment in uh, cycle lanes and, and other measures to uh, help cyclists. B- but in the meantime, is it possible that you're not uh, overzealous in your pursuit of trying to protect pedestrians? Do you think that, that maybe you might have gone too far the other way? No. I th- well, first of all, I, th- I, I totally agree, 100%. The answer to this is safer roads. But I also want pavements to be safe for people to walk, and that's the majority of people. Much greater number of people walk around than cycle around. And uh, if there's no conflict, actually, as, as Don said, that probably that discretion should be used. But there are occasions when, when uh, cyclists uh, are not being considerate they're causing worry and sometimes I've heard of people have to jump out of the way, you know, older people. It's not really right that they should have to do that. And the considerate thing to do is either stay on the road or just get off the bike and walk along with it. That's not the end of the world, is it? Thank you both. Joe Irvin, Chief Executive of Living Streets, and Donica McCarthy, who co-founded the group Stop Killing Cyclists.